All right, thanks for staying with us now. According to a report by Kaztag, a news agency in the Republic of Kazakhstan, 14 illegal migrants from Nigeria lived in one of the hostels in Almaty, and investigations showed that their periods of stay on the territory of Kazakhstan had expired. The country is currently taking measures to identify host individuals and um, legal entities to take appropriate measures. Now, according to the head of the Migration Service Department of Almaty Police Department, illegal migration, a complex issue in Nigeria caused by a variety of issues ranging from economic, political, social, and environmental factors, and it can have negative consequences for both individuals and society as a whole. So today, we're asking, um, why is illegal migration amongst Nigerians still an issue? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1-803-84663. I mean, I don't think any of us on this table has somebody that is not living abroad <laughs> or do, do, does not have any, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, so... But Every, all of them are legally migrated. So I yeah. was just coming. Yeah. I was just coming there. Yeah. Uh, um, so every time these conversations come out uh, um, to the open, I keep wondering what exactly would be the reason. Because you see, several times I, I've said it several times that you would travel to the U.S. and say, ah, "Why are you going back to Nigeria?" You know, you hear all those people tell you those kind of stuff. Why do you want to go back? You know, sometimes some people have migrated illegally just based on those kind of suggestions. You can stay here, you can do this, and you know, and they they eventually stay. And of course, they know that it is not you know it's not it's not as easy as the yeah. people painted it. Um, but the truth is, um, the question is, why do we have illegal migrations? You know, um, and. I think all of us here, we have people that are living abroad and virtually all of them, right? In fact, all of them, not even virtually, all of them moved legally to the U.S. and some to other parts of the world, right? And they're doing well. So is this a case of, first of all, resources? That maybe people do not have the right resources to be able to channel the, the what's it called, the legal routes to some of these migration processes? Or is this a case of lack of information? Or is it that these people just feel like, you know what, um, there's the mindset thing that I just have to do it illegally. What exactly do you think the factors would be? Who is going to come first? <laughs> NJ? <laughs> um, I would say we'll, we'll take a factor after factor. So the first one would be economic challenges. We don't have enough opportunities in Nigeria. And there's high unemployment rate. The pay is low. The income is low. The dollar rate is changing every day, so it's affecting that also. Mm -hmm. It's affecting the price of goods and services. So generally, with the amount, what you're making f as a salary is not enough to fund even just the basic lifestyle. Okay, so Angel, let me, so that, what you've just painted now yeah. is why people would want to leave Nigeria. Yeah. So the question is, why would they want to leave illegally? Because of that, do you no. know that? No, if I do not have money to even live here, mm -hmm. how so that's what I was saying that is it a financial thing? That's what I'm saying, that's what I'm getting to. So, if I do not even have money to survive here, mm. definitely I do not have enough to survive over there. So, the only way for me, and I don't want to be here because I don't, I have Nigerians see it as you have less opportunities here, but if you go out there, you have a slighter better chance of surviving mm -hmm. so i'd rather go there and i don't have the money to afford it so the only way to go is illegally do you understand what yeah. i'm saying so because there's no you can't afford it here you can't afford the life here you can't afford it there but someone tells you okay with one of maybe your salary for one month i can sneak you in through the back you will pay for that sounds do you agree <laughs> i mean i think it's um desperation and also extreme desperation uh, such that you're at a place where your thinking gets rich or die trying. And like NJ said, you probably may have heard the success stories of people who went there. Maybe people you know, for instance, I have people who have come there, right? And I'm in a position where I'm, I'm tempted by their success stories. I want to go there, but my reality in Nigeria is not telling me the truth. And so I'm thinking, what I, I'm not saying I will, I'm just using myself as an example, please. 
and I'm thinking, what else am I going to do now? Someone comes up with an option and says, okay, um, how about you take a bus to Mali and then from Mali you do this and you do that and you do that. And at the end of the day, legal migration might take you maybe 40, 50 million naira. But if you go through this route, it's, going, it's only going to take you 750,000 naira. If you're desperate enough for it, it's only natural okay. that you only so take the 750,000 naira route. To some so what I hear you say is that the reason I would want to leave this country illegally might be because I feel like, you know, financially I cannot afford a legal path. That's yes, one of it. Understand? That's, That's one. one of it. Mm -hmm. But you see, is it that that is the real issue or is the ignorance? You know why I say this? Because mm -hmm. now I've had so many people leave this country legally, right? And I feel like the problem with illegal migration is more of a knowledge problem, right? A lot of people do not know. Mm. They do not know that this, this, these countries that they are going to, a lot of these countries have opened up, um, what's it called? I mean, there are some people, it is actually even next to nothing you pay. Do you get what I'm saying? They give you free. I mean, I've seen so many um, stories of people that say, oh, come to my country, I'll give you um, housing allowance, I will even give you whatever allowance just to come and because those countries are countries that have like a, a population problem. They have older people in their in their countries and they're mm -hmm. looking to, to find younger people to come and populate the place and all mm -hmm. of that so that they can get a good young workforce. So this illegal migration itself, so the factor of our economic realities, right, is why people will want to leave Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But why people will want to live illegally, I don't think it's an economical problem. Now, so here is the other angle. The, yes, some of these countries, some of them will even say skilled workers and, you know, whatnot. But then the thing is, the qualification too. Like, there is this new one on STEM that the U.S. is doing that is the diversity in, in the workforce or something that the U.S. and a couple of other countries are also doing, Right. And so some people are aware of this, but the qualification, I, I, I don't fit the qual like STEM now. I don't know anything science except I have to go back to school. So if I want to migrate using that, if I'm knowledgeable about that, no matter how much I know about it, I am not qualified for it. And so if they say there is diversity in the workplace, maybe they want to employ, have more of, you know, maybe people, they don't have enough of... Uh, people from Africa, and on the list, which they've actually done, they've said, Nigeria, you're not on the list. We want people that have very minor representation in the U.S. Nigeria has a lot of representation in the U.S., so automatically, Nigeria is off the list. Again, disqualified, you know? And so when you're going through all of this list, and, and uh, I think there is also the education route. If you want to go through education route, some of them will say, okay, if you're coming through education, um, this is the fee that you're going to have to pay you don't have it or you're going to have to study this so that you can either end up being an african teacher or lecturer in african studies while you're studying as so you're not qualified for it do you understand so it's not just there's a lot of information out there but you also have to look at it through qualification that's one another thing is also processing times like i have spoken i'm not going to call out the person but i know someone who had to migrate illegally because the spouse is there the person don't wait seven years that's still processing paper. What is going on? Do you understand? And so when you're taking that much processing time, families want to be reunited. Spouses want to be reunited. So when it's taking you, ideally your green card or the green card invitation should be processed within, I think, three years or three to five years. This is seven years and counting. It hasn't worked. And eventually, God, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I'm just telling someone's story. And eventually, the door is opened. She finally gets a visit visa through... Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, when she, when she migrates, obviously, she's obviously not going to stay back there. She's obviously not going to come back. She's going to stay there and continue that Greek card processing inside that place. You know? And then the same thing with what the U.S. is currently going through, the Mexican border and all whatnot. Last year, it was 2.2 million people that migrated. Right now, they're getting to 3.5. You know, and some of these people will tell you that they waited on the U.S. authority. I mean, we're talking Nigeria, but I'm just citing U.S. and their migration, Biden's migration problem as an issue. They'll tell you that, see, we waited, though. I have kids there that was taken away from me during Trump's administration. They've not processed everything. I need to see my children. So by hell or high water, I have to get through. 
Okay, so I get the idea of the processing time, mm -hmm. which was a major issue again, because again, if you even look at it, right, um, COVID even worsened a lot of things. If right. you check a lot of embassies, they were bombarded because they had a backlog mm -hmm. of things. But again, I'm saying to you that some of these things have been eased off, right? So I feel like when it comes to issues around migration, I am from Edo State, Benin City. Now, now get them. <laughs> You know when I say the Baba of the Babas, <laughs> of the illegal migrants, a full Edo State Benisti. So it is something that it is like somewhat embedded in mm. us. If not for now that technology has changed and advanced where people mm. are no, you can no longer, because I know people that had to use somebody else, I'll come and use your passport to travel. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So now, you, because of biometrics, because of fingerprints, and all the technology has come into, you know, the, uh, um, what's it called, the borders, right? It is mm -hmm. difficult for us to do some of the things that we heard our uncles, our aunties, and our parents, you yeah. know, what they did, yeah. right? But you see, when it comes to illegal migration, I feel like there is a huge chunk of mindset that is troubling a lot of people. Because mm -hmm. you see, some of these things that you've talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Validity in processing time, it might take a while, right? Mm -hmm. But the truth is, right, if you understand the, the consequences of going illegally, right, you would rather have that weight. You know, my sister is currently, she's a French citizen now, mm -hmm. but she had to move to the U.S. to go study and do some other things, right? Thank God for the kind of family that we come from, right? Because if not for the kind of family that we, 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 we I mean, the kind of people that we are, there were just too many things filtering in her ear. You can do this, you can do that, you can do that. I said, no. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So it was a case of we have to put our foot on ground. Whatever needs to be done legally for me to be able to get a, what's it called, a, a, a work permit and all of that is what I would. And she's gotten it already. Do you understand? It mm -hmm. didn't take so much time. So I get you, right, that some of these things, it is because of the, but I feel like, again, if you surround yourself around people that only think, if they want to do anything, the only, the first, because I know some people that if they want to do anything, the, by default, they always go illegal through the, means. yes, it is the illegal <laughs> one they want to think of. Yes. So if you surround yourself around those kind of people, there is every chance that you too, you will find yourself Thinking trying like to that, leave the right. country illegally. Mm -hmm. When you talk about jobs, you talk about work, you talk about all of these things, school and all of that, there are courses that you can get fully fun funded scholarship. You see, it is the work that we do not want to put in. There are fun, fully funded scholarships. There are fully, what's it called? Uh, what's it called? Fully sponsored jobs. You know, so when you talk about qualifications around STEM, must you go to the U.S.? Do you understand? Mm. There are other countries that are opening their borders to Nigerians. There are other countries that can also be well, that you can also survive. So it is the mindset again. If this country is not favorable to you, have you checked other countries? For me, I feel like it is that inability for us to even take that time to just do small research. We don't want to go and study. We don't want to go and learn. Because even this qualification you're talking about, people are looking for drivers in Canada. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. They are looking for farmers. Do you need qualification to be a farmer? Do you need qualification to be a driver? You have to be a no. farmer to be. <laughs> you don't have, you don't know what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm trying to tell you that for every, um, for every skill gap, Mm -hmm. right that they have they are looking for those workers and the skilled workers sometimes those is not necessarily that you must be or you know, educated or uh, listen i like to go down to the person selling peanuts on this and that person selling peanuts Let can me, have a skill that's what i'm that telling you hang on hold on they have a not skill that that, that's it's what i'm trying to let easy. you understand it's not as easy as that the person selling peanuts the person that is a fantastic farmer right have you ever gotten in contact with immigration people or people who work out all day? Because it's not you that will go and do it. Because the person, you have the skill, but you don't have the language. And, you know, communication is an issue. Let's not forget, right? So you have to write your IELTS or depending on wherever you're going to. Most times, they don't even understand these things. So there is the middleman who helps in communication. Ask that middleman how much they are collecting to, serve all, to do all that. At the end of the day, that farmer, you see that, just, just go back to your farm because you can't afford their fees. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> she said it. <laughs> Okay, they are shouting inside the studio, two of them. <laughs>
They said I'm far from reality. So if you just tune in, we're discussing the topic: why is illegal migration amongst Nigerians? Uh, Nigeria is still an issue. Now let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. I wish we could call, take calls today, but we can't take calls. Please send in your messages and your uh, WhatsApp. You know, just send the message for to 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 us. We'll read them. <laughs> so I get you, Angie. Angie was, by the way, she was attacking me. <laughs> saying, that I am far from reality. But why would you say that? Because I don't know. See, let me tell you something, right? I feel like yes, I get it. A lot of times, but I also I also know people that even in that very poor state, they would never think of illegal migration. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? There are some people that have their, their principles and Values, they stand by uh -huh. their Convictions, and they, yeah. And they stand by it. They would they would work an honest they would work an honest job in order to make an honest living mm -hmm. to get to where they want to be. But we have to come to the realization that our reality is that Nigerians have lost that part a long time ago. So asking and keep reiterating it is not going to change the reality of it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. If we want to know why, these are the issues. There are issues bordered. There are issues on ground. Is it the insecurity or is it the political crisis that is happening every time where you don't know what dangling like pendulums and you don't even know where you're heading to? Or is, or is it the education? Which one is it? So, okay, so... And we're, talking about, people, and we're talking about people who can't afford a 9 to 5, a, a meal, mm -hmm. like a full 3 square meal. But they are ready to sell their kidney but in order to go I, abroad. I, I Trust me, it has to be that bad for people to want to do that. Because nobody wants to risk their life. Day. I eat to once a day. But you can afford three Based days. on the fact that you want to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> you want to lose weight, that's why. I'm trying so hard to understand. Because, you see, my, my, my mind cannot process illegal migration. I'm Which sorry. Which is understandable, you but know, it no. doesn't stop it But, but you know happening. why I'm saying this? I said, if, if I was born in Benin City, Right. Mm -hmm. this is, I need you to help me follow this picture I'm yeah. trying to think. Okay. If I was born in Benin City, I think this is part of the reason my father mm -hmm. decided that he would, he would give birth to all of us in Kaduna State. He, he migrated to Kaduna many, many years ago before he started having his children. Because for him, the mindset was that around Benin, you understand, is Italo transactions. You understand? Young girls who just mm -hmm. uh, grow Italy. up and say they want to go and do prostitution in Italy. That was what was, was really the rave of the moment whilst we were being born. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel like if my mind, if I was raised in that kind of setting, right, I would probably not see anything wrong with illegal migration, right? So I'm saying to you that for me, I feel like young people now right it is probably what it, they have been exposed to because no matter how much i i i mean no matter how much you say you you want to flag anything juicy in my face even if i see the results that as long as i cannot see that the document that you left nigeria with was was what's called legally authorized for you to leave mm. i don't see how i want to go into another country and now be a fugitive, uh, a fugitive, fugitive or, uh, or you understand, or be running away from the, from the law. That's my point. So I get it. I am far from the reality. And I'm saying to you that that reality is also, it also uh, as a result of where my mind is at. So mm -hmm. why I'm saying that is that if we, why don't we find a way to elevate the mindset of Nigerians? Do you get what I'm saying? I get it. We have economic challenges. The, the, the country, the political ch challenges and the troubles and all of that is mm -hmm. part of why I want to run away from my country. But in the end, right, you also don't want to find yourself abroad with nothing. Because it is even ten times worse. So look at these people now that they were caught. They still want to, they don't even, with all the things that is going on there, they still do not want to leave. What is happening in Kazakhstan? Something has to be happening that is not happening but, here. Oh, I remember what I said that people are. Adapting. I don't know. I'm trying to. People understand are. It. There is like this deterioration in the Nigerian society that people have gotten to that place where, and I'm not saying it like we should clap for ourselves. I'm saying it with a lot of pain in my heart and embarrassment that my country has gotten to this level where people are desperate. It's either get rich or die trying. You know, that's just that's just a sad reality where we find there has ourselves. to be some like I, like she said there has to be something happening there. And mm -hmm. why I would say there has to be something happening there, I'll give you an example. So if irrespective of how illegal you are in any country, most countries, there would be some provision that the government will make for you eventually. Mm -hmm. If they can't Social send you if they can't something. send you back to your country, there's the refugee, there's something. They always have one plan. We don't have that plan though. No. Mm -hmm. The only time we have that plan is when 
they uh, uh, they sit in parliament and then they approve budget for palliative, or there's some palliative that we never see. Mm. We're well, not even discussing <laughs> that, but it's either that or when there's war in a close by country and we decide, okay, we're going to give this, we're going mm -hmm. to build innocent. That's when we remember innocent motors. Mm -hmm. We now tell them that they should build cars, let's send to them because that one is cheaper. So it's only in situations mm -hmm. like that that you see in Nigeria. So where is that opportunity for people here? Why do you think people don't migrate to Nigeria? The only people that migrate to Nigeria are people that are coming to come and collect money from Nigerians. Mm -hmm. They are coming and they to come are collecting, out businesses here. They're collecting a lot. And they collect it and they, go, they move it back to their country. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that provision here. And that is the reason why a common person, a common individual will say, I'd rather die there. Because even the burial, they will bury me better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's the truth. This is so they embarrassing. Will bury, they will My bury goodness. Me better there than they will bury me here. Then they will even put rose. In Nigeria, everybody will come and stand like this. When they are done, that's it. Though. They will go and eat rice. Everybody will move on. Mm -hmm. So it's the. We talk about humanity and it, things the like that. The value for human life. That's the thing. Mm. We have. That, it has eroded a long time ago. Mm. So I understand the need for us to keep talking about it so that there's that awareness and everything. But we also have to consider what if we're going to go by what we're going for. These mm -hmm. are the reasons. And they are valid reasons. I'm not supporting illegal migration, but no. they are valid reasons. Mm -hmm. If Because it's not just the poor man. If you say it's the poor man and it's a, an information men, uh, men, uh, situation a kind of thing, mm -hmm. it's not just the poor man that is doing it. I have friends who have migrated with visitors. Visa. Let's just go. And well, then they never it. came back. Mm. <laughs> and from there, some of them have become citizens today. Some of them are still fighting that battle and hiding under a rock because if they find you, you're on your way back here mm. with no plans of return. Mm. So it's the, it's the situation now on ground. And we have to talk about it, not just from the hu human. There's the human angle, but that human angle is God that will help us because it will mm -hmm. take us a long time. And for us to even get to that point, we have to start even... Believing in it. And for us to believe in it, we have to see it. And for us to see it, our current government has to do something so that it gives us hope that we want to still remain in this country. If not, you are about to see another massive shipload. Migration. If people can Exodus. live in containers, hmm. they will. For an individual to say, an individual, you are here, you are surviving. Even if you beg on the streets, you will make some money. Somebody will be nice to you so that you can eat for the day. And someone decides, I will pack a backpack. Mm -hmm. All my things, I will put it in one bag and I will go in the desert where there's no water mm -hmm. and there's no food and I'm going to spend every dime I have just to go to another country. Trust me, whatever they are running from, they are not thinking about what they are running They are thinking about where they are heading right. to and they rather face that than stay where they are and die. Mm -hmm. Or oh, die trying. Yeah. It's, it, that, is, that is it. Get rich or die trying. And another angle of it is that while you are suffering, and you don't have food here, and you're thinking of how you're going to survive. You hear news like this that they are buying a, a yacht. Uh, that they are buying a yacht. So on I what water? Narrow. On what waterways? Hmm. On what waterways? You are buying cars. On what roadways? What road? What good road have you created? What good road have you completed that you're driving this car so that the next four years another person will come and tell us that those cars are bad? So that let's get another They'll one. Another Each of these cars are costing how much? These things are in billions. Mm -hmm. So, when you think about it, it's not our humanity. That has been far. Like, when you watch the news every day, it erodes on it, on it even on social media. Sometimes you just don't go, I don't, I don't, I try not to watch things like CNN anymore because the only thing time you hear about Nigeria is just say, something has happened in Nigeria. Mm. <laughs> it's always bad news. Mm -hmm. Because when you watch some of these things, it angers me. It does. It irritates you, and you don't. You're not sure. In other countries, when there's an issue, a parliament member will say things like, "This is how you know somebody has humanity." Mm. On behalf of myself mm -hmm. and my seat, I'm giving up my salary this year, this or this month. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work for, almost like I'm going to work for free, for free. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to give it. I'm going to focus it on maybe there has been one major issue yeah. within the country. Mm. So as my own personal donation, this is what I'm going to contribute, my salary or 
a tenth of my salary because mm -hmm. you know how much it is. So you've calculated what a tenth would be like. So a tenth of my salary or a quarter of my salary, I'm going to dedicate to this. That mm -hmm. is what humans do. That's yeah. what reasonable people do. That's what service people do. They try and make it in such a way that everyone is happy at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Or at least you don't feel left out. We don't get that in Nigeria. Nigeria, what we get is the crumbs. So how do we solve this problem? Because whether we like it or not, like you rightly said, the, the reasons people would want to leave Nigeria illegally is very valid. But that does not just That doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't make yeah. it right. Yeah. So how do we solve this problem? Because I know that there are so many countries right now that are looking for Nigerians. Like literally all you need to do is go online. You will see so many people telling you that come. Come to my country. I saw one small country, I think in Italy or something. They are looking for young people because mm, they, they have are. an old population and all mm. of that. Like there are people that are looking to, to have people. So my point is, I get it that the economy is tough. I get it that a lot of these things are happening. But let's just take a, a second or two to pause and do a small, do small reset. Because bad as see bad, let me tell you something. Even those illegal paths that you take, it's not cheap. No. You still need to spend money. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So in the end, let's not be penny wise, pound foolish. Do you get know what I'm saying? Let's find out because it might just be that there's just an information that you need that will just save you from the stress or the hassle mm -hmm. of going through an illegal means, right? Because you see, when things are done legally, it helps you to even help the people that you are. Because some people will tell you, I'm leaving not because of me. I'm leaving because of my, my siblings. I'm leaving because of my parents. Mm -hmm. You want to help them. You want to go and get yourself better job so that when you come back you can help them so that's the more reason you should actually think first think through and find a legal means to this migration i get it yeah. poverty is everywhere do you understand it's not like it is <clears throat> it is rosy out or, or rosier elsewhere the only thing that is working in some of these places that we want to run to is that you can plan you can say, okay, you know what? If I get a job that gives me X, Y, Z, I can plan my, my, my yeah, income around this. There's a structure around, you know, mm -hmm. a way that you can, once you're, you have a, a steady income, there's a path that you can plan. Say, in the next five years, if I continue to earn this amount of money, if I can mm -hmm. add one more or two more jobs, I can become this person. But that is the uncertainty that we have here in Nigeria. There is no clear, what's yeah. it called, structure or plan. And, uh, sorry, I have to cut you. Um, another solution to this illegal migration is I think there is a lot because the middlemen there, the people who understand the laws and the rules and how to do the applications, they are necessary. We are not going to rule them out, right? But I'm just going to plead to them that if they can just be human, because people are cashing out with these things. You, if you want to apply for a work visa, I think it's maybe I don't know, maybe US or UK. I, I don't know, four hundred and four hundred and something fifty dollars or so. That's the idea deal you know of a work visa but if you go to a middleman to help you work that at 450 dollars based on the current uh exchange, FA, rate. exchange rate is not up to one million naira. Mm. but if you go to them to help you with this you'll be hearing five million you'll be hearing six million you know and at the end of, it just completely discourages people and you you know that if you use your hand to write whatsoever, maybe you've done your application at the office and whatnot, if you use your hand to write it, chances of you understanding how it works, you have to be like extremely intelligent or, I mean, so I don't know. I but think there's a, there's a huge business opportunity here mm -hmm. for anybody that cares to listen. Maybe we need to um, plead with the people that understand these processes of migration, right? Why don't you set up a proper, um, what's it called, um, company <clears throat> That can help these people, you know, at probably reduced fees. Why yeah, but I don't know. The government, <laughs> no, government cannot help government. you migrate. No, 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 you don't understand. Mm. The same way people come in, if you open your doors to go out, for people to go out, mm. Mm -hmm. your doors will be open for people to come in also. Mm -hmm. So why not make enhance the legal migration channels that we have? Do you understand? Mm. Make it legal. Advertise it. The fact that you advertise it does not mean people are like everybody's going to run away. But the reason why they are not advertising it is because they know they that people want really want to go. Yeah. And then yeah, we have government cannot be party. But the government cannot be party to say, uh, do you want to live in the UK? This <laughs> the government will not do that. So what I think the government should do, 
I mean, At just to help you. Make control. make living conditions more conducive so that we have a. Don't roll your eyes at me. <laughs> if you make living conditions conducive, <laughs> a lot of people would want to stay back in their countries. Yeah. Right? Um, jobs, for instance, right? When you see all these um, doctors, nurses running away, it's because they've seen the cost. If I if I'm earning X Y Z, you understand, mm -hmm. I can never earn that kind of amount if I stay back in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So why don't you see as a government find a way to make this instead of this your uh, 360 uh, um, um, cars that you are buying at the 160 million, I'll be 140 million. Some mm -hmm. some figures say 140, some say 160 million. Whatever the case is, why don't we think about I mean, what's it called? Increasing the the pay grade. Right for, for, for skilled workers, for government workers. Mm -hmm. So when you increase their pay, you know, nobody will be thinking too far. Because again, living conditions will be better for people. Yeah. So it is the it is the and this is the insensitivity that I that I say when I see some of these arguments around buying a yacht or buying a car or whatever it is, refurbishing a house, you know, for ridiculous amount of money. You know, you know, there's one angle that you are going to buy that car. There's another angle that that price is also an inflated price. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If sometimes you even hear that okay, somebody wants to renovate a place and they even put the regular cost, it is even a different thing. But as far as it's a government contract, everybody just believes that when it comes to add government, like it's like 50 times 50 the amount percent, of the, yeah. the cost of the money. You know, 50 times, not 50%, 50 <laughs> times the cost of the money. You understand? So it, it, it makes no sense. It is the height of insensitivity. If we're talking about patriotism, we're talking about you know love for country, we're mm -hmm. talking about value for human life, this is the time. It is not in when we have abundance that we need empathetic leaders. It yeah. is in this scarcity that we need empathetic leaders. Mm -hmm. So if we have empathetic leaders, we are talking about migration, it will no longer be a thing of, it will not be a thing of, you know what, let me just go. But it is not, no, it is a thing of, my life depends on this, which shouldn't be the case. Do you understand? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people that I see that they want to leave the country is that their life depends on it. Mm -hmm. It's very, very few people that are able to leave the country just, okay, because, you know, um, I need to, uh, what's it called? I need to just, just go and get a better life. A mm. lot of people, it is because they look at the trajectory. If I continue like this, I'm going to go bankrupt. Yeah. And it's a very sad reality. And we only live once and time is running. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would say that the, some of the advice to government would be to maybe up on border control because our borders are porous, quite porous to an extent. So up on border control, Create aware necessary awareness where necessary and See, improve lives of people. If for we, me, if government people have better lives. Government, like if you, you said, want, want to leave. Government, if you want hear it, if you want don't hear it, everybody will not be as loyal as Sandra is. There. Except you want to end up with a country where nobody is there. Please do the right thing. I rest my case. <laughs> this argument, I'm not going to win it. No. But honestly, I just pray that people see differently. I don't know. Government will have their own headache, right? But I'm, I'm just thinking, for me, it's your safety. What if you lose your life in the process? People say, I'd rather die. Okay. Oh. It is well. Thank you so much, ladies. I think we had a conversation that was worth the time. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, I'm sure you follow us across all our social media handles. Listen to our podcast on Spotify. It's at Wish Your Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch, and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today by Atiku Abubakar that lives in Dubai, <laughs> I, just, I just had to add that. <laughs> it says, young Nigerians aren't just leaving Nigeria because of bad pay <laughs> and working conditions. They are leaving because there is no hope. Uh, See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. <laughs> as we bring another great conversation to your screen. <laughs>